Last week, Steven Crowder accused the Daily Wire of offering him a slave contract because they had the audacity to begin negotiations with him at a measly $50 million. But the problem is that he would possibly make less money if he violated YouTube's terms of service and got himself banned, as he usually does. Now, the Daily Wire, according to him, was in lockstep with big tech because of that provision because they were enforcing big tech policy, supposedly, by not giving Steven Crowder money if he's not making any money because he can't do that if he got himself banned. That, of course, led to the Daily Wire responding and defending themselves, which prompted Steven Crowder to then release a recorded conversation with co-CEO of the Daily Wire, Jeremy Boring, and also others like Candace Owens jumped in as well to defend her parent company. Now, I'm happy to report that since then, the situation has deteriorated considerably and lines are being drawn. And redrawn. For example, Jordan Peterson initially tweeted out support for Steven Crowder, only to then subsequently delete that tweet after finding out that Steven Crowder was talking about his employer, The Daily Wire. Peterson then tweeted out the video from his employer, where they essentially explain how Steven Crowder is full of shit. Now also, as I mentioned earlier, Candace Owens joined the fight, calling Steven Crowder's attempt to expose The Daily Wire a bitch move. But to do a total bitch move and go out to the public rather than trying to resolve these things and these in these slight differences behind the scenes and to make it seem like you're the hero and you're the true one. You keep it authentic when something really nothing happened other than you didn't like an initial term sheet. And all you had to do was tell them that and tell them what you didn't like and go back and forth with lawyers like everybody else. I think it's crappy. I think it's I, I think Steven is a, a little egocentric. He probably will do better on his own. I don't think he knows how to plan a team. And by the way, the last thing I'm going to say, because I'm going on Tim Pool tonight, so I'm going to say it anyways later, is that I'm pretty sure wasn't it Steven Crowder who also screwed over somebody he used to work with? Was it not Gay Jared because he had him tied up in a contract? Wasn't that Steven Crowder who did that? So is he supposed to be the moral high bar? Are we not supposed to call him out for that? Here, here's the thing. Steven, why don't you release not gay Jared from his NDA and allow him to talk about how he felt he was treated by you? Because I know that at the blaze, everyone says that you're actually not that nice. You treat people poorly, but you bring in so much revenue that everybody just has to take it. So I don't like it. It stinks to high heaven. And I'm calling you out on that because I think it's, it was crappy that you threw mud on me. Did it the first time via a tweet a long time ago. You're not doing it a second time. Total bitch move. Next. Now, later that night on Tim Pool's podcast, she arguably dragged him even harder, and I think she had him nailed. She exposed him for who he is. Not that she's not a grifter herself, but regardless, what she's saying about Steven Crowder is spot on. Well, LOL to anyone who thinks that Steven Crowder is not doing this to make money. Like, I mean, I just have to outwardly laugh. He's he's the person in in a disguise. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? He's he's like, I'm not I'm here because I'm, I care about all of you. That's why I'm recording my friend and doing this crappy thing where I literally could have just said, no, I don't like those terms. And then said to everybody, I'm starting my own outfit. Fair. You walk away all the time. You have to go. You, you, I have walked away. You know, I had an offer from the blaze. It didn't work for me. You know what I mean? I don't need yeah. to piece apart the, the contract. You know, it, it, I love those guys. I think Tyler is, is amazing. I mean, this is what I'm saying. People need to stop thinking that he is some knight in shining armor. He's not. He's not a knight in shining armor. And if you can't see that, watch this video because I think his acting is never more apparent. Even the titles. I didn't want to do this. Oh, really? Then why the hell did you record him? People, please use your common sense. I am not even, it's not even because I work for Daily Wire. It is because he personally is, he's lying and he insulted me. And during his, his lying campaign, he's still lying. He even said something in this video where he's like, now they're sending out their, no, no, no. You took, if, if you're going to aim and you're going to hit somebody with shrapnel and it's going to be me, you better aim correctly because I don't like shit like this. Okay. I have been quiet. I know Steven Crowder treats people like, tr like absolute trash. It's a known thing in the conservative movement. Ask anybody that works at the blaze, any person's ever had a show on the blaze, how Steven Crowder treats people. Yeah. So Candace Owens, as much of a grifter as she is herself, she has Steven Crowder dead to rights. And also during that same stream, they ended up discovering something that was very telling about Steven Crowder, which essentially confirms that this was nothing more than a huge grift. We can ch check this. Pull upon who is the domain for Stop Big Con was registered on 12 12 2022. <laughs> who is.com? Stop Big Con was registered on 12 12 2022. The internet sleuths are going to catch him. Crowder announces he left the blaze and asked people to sign up for Mug Club on 12 15 2022. It was all a I, the fact like. 
listen, I love you, Internet Slews, because this is, of course, was going to happen. And this is the problem is that Steven has to realize people are smart. OK, people are smart. They're going to figure it out. Oh, so you happened to look up the to to register Big Con. Yeah, let's confirm that. What's Stop the Big Con. Yeah, I got it right is here. It there you go. Big Con dot com. Right now we are 12, 12, 2022. So it this is. was this was registered. Yeah. Stop Big Con was registered before he announced he was leaving the Blaze. Yeah. Is that what it was? He, Isn't that so weird? I he thought... announced he was leaving the Blaze on 12th. Now, we'll get to Crowder's appearance on Tim Pool's show, but on Monday, after Shapiro and Owens came back from their weekend breaks, they both reacted to the fallout that happened over the weekend, and it got even uglier. Candace Owens, for example, seemingly implied that she maybe has dirt on Steven Crowder, but she won't reveal what that is right now. Because I now am more aware of certain information, Rather than being angry, I would like to implore my audience and everybody that isn't paying attention to this situation not to condemn him, but to pray for him. Sometimes people need a prayer. Sometimes people need a scripture. You know, Stephen purports to be a Christian, and I believe that he needs to lean into his faith. And uh, I am certain that in the near future, more information will come out. I do not think it is my place to say more than that. Well, probably what I should say is I am unsure at this moment if, if it is my place to say more than that. You know, maybe if I feel in further defense, some things should be said, or maybe if I feel that the public has a right to understand certain circumstances. But at this moment, I think I would just like to carefully back out. Now, we'll hear Steven Crowder's response to Candace Owens in a moment, but first, I want to get to what Ben Shapiro had to say because he shared a lot more than he did when he initially responded last week, and you can tell that he is visibly upset in this uh, in this video that we're about to watch. Steven's not a moron. He apparently is just a bad person who tapes his friends and then releases the tapes for personal gain. I I'm personally insulted by Steven's behavior here. I'm more insulted it has nothing to do with me because he hasn't actually said anything about me. It has to do with you don't get to attack my best friend and suggest that my best friend is some sort of shill for big tech when we spend every day, literally every day in this business, attempting to fight big tech and to win. When you spend every day trying to bring good content to people who can't get it in a lot of other ways and build a business, who go out of our way to make offers to people for tens of millions of dollars so they can continue to, prov to, to provide the content that you want. Tens of millions of dollars to people like Steven Crowder. I don't see a lot of other people walking across the table to make this offer to Steven Crowder. The easiest thing to do in our particular industry is to attack your friends and make money off of that. You know, I'm, it makes me nauseous to, to be talking about this, honestly. It makes me sick to be talking about this. I'm, I'm sad for, for Steven that he feels the necessity to plan for months, apparently, to attack his friends, to try to grow an email list in the most cynical possible fashion and tape his friends on the phone and then release that public. Who does that? Who does that? Have you, is that something you do? I mean, let me just ask you on a personal level. Have you ever done that? Have you ever taped your friends? Is that a thing that you do? So as much as I disagree with Ben Shapiro about basically everything, I think he's correct here. Steven Crowder is profiting off of drama and profiting off of drama is a common phenomenon in this industry remember how back in 2021 jimmy Dore basically went on a bridge burning spree and attacked any and everybody who even mildly disagreed with him this includes kyle kalinsky crystal ball the vanguard everyone at tyt myself and the list of names goes on david dole also that same year and the views that he got from farming drama off of his own peers far exceeded the views that he got from any other video. So Ben Shapiro is right in his assessment of Steven Crowder. But speaking of Crowder, we'll now turn to his response because on the Tim Pool show, well, he took some time to directly respond to the individuals like Candace Owens who called what he did a bitch move. If someone publicly was going, and by the way, I'm not going to be doing the personal stuff. I'm not going to be coming in here calling anybody a bitch, right? Sending out hatchet people. Um, I understand why Candace was mad. Honestly, I understand. I understand why she was. Mad. I'd probably be mad too. So um, I don't. I don't think it gives you an excuse to go and talk the way like every girl does who gets their husband into a fight at a bar. But I understand why she was upset. Um, if you had the ability, if someone's going out saying, "Hey, you're a, you're a difficult person who only cares about the money, and uh, that you're a bitch," and, and you had the opportunity to clear it in because it was verifiably untrue, which now no one is arguing, would you do it? 
Would you, how else do, would people switch from, it was about a $50 million salary to, oh, recording a phone call. Does James, do we allow it when James O'Keefe does it? Is it only when corruption is on the side of the left? And here's the issue is, I'll tell you who this hurts, the dishonesty. I'm not just saying Daily Wire. This is really, this is about the entire movement as a whole. So that right there, right, is fundamentally dishonest. And the gaslighting still keeps taking place. Candace Owens on this show said, um, hey, we all follow the same guidelines, right? We all follow, the Crowder does too. That's verifiably false. Now, so you can publicly audit this. We've had four strikes, right, in the last, since May, I think, 2021 to October 2022. Uh, one was the Mackay Bryant. Uh, one was a sketch with Alex Jones. That one's guilty. One was <laughs> as charged. One was him uh, quoting the CDC. And by the way, none of this will get you in trouble because you can say this now. Him quoting the CDC. I did, yeah. Bringing up the CDC numbers on flu deaths for children versus COVID. And we were saying this is interesting science, right? That COVID kills more senior citizens, but for some reason is significantly less lethal to young people, to infants. That science is accepted now, so you won't get a strike. But that was one of the strikes. The other was when we had Carrie Lake on in a gubernatorial election. Four. How many have taken place from Daily Wire? You guys, zero. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying it's a badge of honor. I'm not saying that it's a badge of honor to be suspended. If, if they came out and said, look, look, we demand, as uh, Jeremy said in his 55-minute video, we demand that all of our creators follow these rules that YouTube and Facebook set through punitive practices in mandating of our creators to do so. And Crowder's a little bit more of a rebel. You know what? He's been banned for four times. And that's just, that's not the same kind of, that's not a problem. The problem is saying that we all follow the same rules because here's, so that's all publicly verifiable. Now, I could tell you, I could tell you guys that behind the scenes, I've had many conversations with senior YouTube executives who say, you know, we might be able to get you re-monetized if you kind of play ball like these got Daily Wire and insert other people here. I could tell you that, but would you believe me? Or would I have to provide receipts? I could tell you that that takes place. That hurts the creators out there who they end up, you know, hitting a glass ceiling that has set the sandbox that has mandated their creators. I love how he makes it seem as if he's uniquely victimized by YouTube's algorithm when, first and foremost, he gets these strikes due to extremely racist content. And the fact that he was outraged that The Daily Wire was only paying him $50 million to do racism that isn't clever or funny, it's just lazy racism, is still astonishing to me. But he gets banned more so than other people because he frequently violates the TLS. Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens don't get banned even if ideologically they are aligned with Steven Crowder because they don't take it as far as Steven Crowder. And they still espouse the same bigotry, but the thing with Steven Crowder is that he goes further by using slurs, anti-gay slurs. He'll do reenactments, for example, of George Floyd being murdered by a cop. So he does these things and he knows it's going to get him banned, but that's kind of the point. Because when you get banned, you can claim that you're being censored, and that's really lucrative because then, you know, his viewers would want to pay for him uh, or pay for memberships, pay for his mug club or whatever grift he's trying to promote at the moment. But another point that's really important is that a smaller channel, had they done what Steven Crowder has been doing would not have nearly as much leeway as he does. But since he's a massive creator with millions of subscribers, he hasn't been permanently banned yet, but yet he still likes to portray himself as the victim when he gets a special pass because of how big he is. Anyone else with as many strikes as Crowder has would be gone from YouTube, but because he's so massive, He's still there, but yet he's the victim. And he makes it seem like the recorded phone call revealed something corrupt and uniquely scandalous because the Daily Wire's co-founder used the term slave, slave labor, which is bad, right? But Stephen, welcome to the right wing where workers don't have rights and exploitation is the name of the game. Stephen Crowder has previously argued against the minimum wage. He's argued against unions, but now he's feigning concern for exploited laborers, and this is all about the entire movement and not just the money. I mean, the sanctimonious bullshit really is too much for me, and Candace Owens was absolutely right to point out that he's playing all of this up. He's using his previous career as an actor to further make this point. Now, one last video that I have to play is him talking tough when it comes to The Daily Wire. This was genuinely cringeworthy. What first needs to be done is people to mean what they say. And if you are taking money from conservatives out there under the guise that you are fighting big tech, start fighting big tech. Start with that, okay? I don't know about the, and I know that when I say this, by the way, they're gonna send, there are gonna be four or five hatchet men coming from the daily. I understand that, by the way. Have you seen anyone else in these videos? 
This is the first time Gerald's been here because I'm like, look, you handle the finances more than I do. It's me. It's two on one. It's three on one. It's four on one. And gee golly, we thought we were friends. And you know what? I'm not going to call anyone a bitch. I still, I mean what I said. Andrew Claybon's one of my all-time favorite people. I think Jordan Peterson is unbelievable. I'd go to the wall for that guy. I think Ben Shapiro is brilliant. Never met Candace Owens. Um, Michael Knowles, my experience with him, I, I don't know him as well. I really like him. I like a lot of these people. Good singer. Is he a good singer? He played guitar too. Well, he yeah. has that voice. I mean, Andrew Claybon, he told me he had that voice since he was like six. He was like, well, teacher, I'm parent, teacher appreciation, they'll give you an apple. And they're like, this, is, this is how you talk. Um, and it's, it's genuine. It's genuine. Send that... Here's the thing. Keep doing it if that's what they want. I'm not going to. At a certain point, my talents will run out. So send four, send five. Certain point, don't send anyone you expect back in one piece. Oh, look out, everyone! We've got a tough guy coming through. Now, I found this entire kerfuffle thoroughly enjoyable and, more importantly, valuable because these are all incredibly odious characters motivated exclusively by money. Maybe Ben Shapiro believes the bullshit that he espouses, but overall, most of these individuals, especially Steven Crowder and Candace Owens, they don't actually care about anything but the grift itself. So when one of them threatens the other's grift, that's when things get ugly, because the gravy train is the only thing that these grifters are loyal to. So I say, let them fight, and I'll continue to enthusiastically watch as some of the most destructive propagandists in the country continue to tear each other down. Keep it coming. Wet, 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 ass, ass, keyword, keyword.